The mountains of Peru are part of the world's largest mountain range, the Andes. Inaccessible most of the year, but in June, the mountains open their passageways to let strangers cross. At an altitude of 10,000 feet, the city of Cusco forms the gateway to the sacred valley of the Incas. From here, the Incas expanded their vast empire across South America. Ruined by the Spaniards in the 1600s, Cusco was rebuilt on Inca foundations. Blind mountaineer Eric Wildfire lost his vision at the age of 13. Instead of being held back, he was determined to show the world that blind people can achieve great things. And he did so by becoming the world's first blind person to summit Mount Everest. One more note. Is this a dude? What are those called? Wind, wind charms? Is that a yeah. dude? A what? A guy. No. What is it? It's a bell and... No, this. <laughs> oh, hold on. It is a little guy. Check this out. A dude. What? From Cusco, a most unlikely team will embark on an extraordinary journey. Line teenagers Alicia Jeans, Terry Garrett, and Paul Jenkins are part of a fellowship of blind, visually impaired, and sighted teenagers. Guided by Eric, they will hike through the Inca heartland. Their goal? To reach the lost city of the Incas, the city of Machu Picchu. Standing in silence, the horizon shining high. Feeling defenseless in this world that is not mine. I tie the ropes tight and put a cloth over my eyes in the night. My hands are up from holding on for my delight all the while. I reach up and I climb. For Eric and the team, the trek promises a life-changing experience. It is Paul Jenkins who finds the challenge the most physically demanding of all. So Paul, maybe even sit down in your, uh, sit down to feel this first one. That's what everybody's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Right sounds like a tall one. It is. My legs aren't very good at... Right. Here it is. Step forward. There you go. Got it. Yep. Okay. All right. Now I've got your hand. Now we're going to be to your left now. The keep, stairs. So keep yourself low, Paul. With your hand, left hand on the wall. There, there you go. go. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's it. Scoot. So pull. Scoot your reach your hand first. Oh, hold on one second. Reach your hand uh, down the shaft of the poles. Yeah, that'll there help. you go. Okay, how am I that's better. Find that's what? a better what? angle for your for your elbow. Oh, they're going that way. That's yeah, that's how. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. You're gonna want to put your left foot down you on that step. There right, you right go. Right next to your poles. Perfect. That's Ooh. it. Nice. 
They're kind of narrow. Good. One more yeah. step and you're down. Yeah. One step down right here. There right you there. Go. Right there. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. To aid Eric, okay. fellow Everest climbers Eric Alexander and Jeff Evans joined the expedition. One of their key concerns is to instruct the blind teenagers to use their poles as a substitute for their eyes. Good. I like it. Now you're on. Let's take them completely apart. So what we want to do is, is spin them, <laughs> pop them off, okay, completely apart, both sections, spin, it would be in three pieces for the blind folks, okay. So if you bring it to one side, it'll lock, and you just want to bring it a little bit back, just like about a centimeter back. So just get it locked and then bring it back just a little bit. Slide it in. Eric? Yep. I'm right here. I'm right where you were. There you are. Speak up there. I was trying, but you turned the Blind other way. Blind people, when they get older, they go deaf too. Oh, okay. It's rough. Yeah, I can't get that to tighten up there. Okay, so, so this one. I got all the way in, but it won't. You know, just goes. If you take my hand. So you see what I'm doing. See this plastic piece? Mm -hmm. On the first section? Yeah. We want to kind of mess. Oh, you're talking about this one down here, huh? No, no. When you when you try to when you try to put them together. Yeah. Are you talking about this piece though? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's let's investigate a little bit. Feel this plastic piece? It's yes. mm -hmm. it's um, locked in right now, right? See, it won't turn anymore that way. Yeah. So then we want to bring it just a little bit back, I'd say, just okay. a little bit back, and then let's slide it in. Feel my hands. Okay, I'm pushing it in. Yep. I'm getting it to the top. Uh, yeah. And then I'm gonna turn it. Okay. And it should engage. Gone. Let's see if it engages. This plastic piece is expanding. Mm -hmm. It's getting bigger. Yeah. So that's the bigger you get it, the easier it's gonna engage. So now I've just spun it a little bit more okay. and I've gotten it fatter. Okay. So now it should it should lock in. Throughout her life, Alicia Jeans has been confronted with her blindness by others. Others who say she can't possibly be happy with her life. Refusing to be held back, she is determined to show these people she can. I'm taking a step down. Now you can take a step down. Not too big. It's rough right here. And now, you can take another step down. Yeah, you're down. Right there. Are you, got, you going down to the left? Yes, or the right? uh, yeah. You got a bunch of, uh, yeah, there's racks everywhere. Okay. I was getting freaked out enough on the salt. Terry Garrett endured 22 traumatic eye surgeries, which left his eyes full of scar tissue by the age of 10. Reaching Machu Picchu is the ultimate challenge for him. To see whether he is able to control his blindness, rather than letting his blindness control him. Along the mountain trails, there are loose rocks and steep drop-offs. Many streams need to be crossed. Bells help to orient in space and give a sense of direction. 
When relying primarily on sound, it is quite hard to find a rock to place a foot on, or even to judge how deep a stream of water is. Teamed in pairs, both blind and sighted teenagers need to rely on each other. Yeah, so much for Peruvian flat, you know. Yep. I see camp! <laughs> Hope of food. <laughs> hey Terry, guess what? Uh, We're alive. I know. <laughs> okay, yeah. Since we're done. Does this little, does this little bag keep it from not ringing? And keep it from ringing, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm putting it in the bag. So it'll go in there. Ah, got it. Okay. It's really hard. Good ah. job. That's my pull.
Dr. Freak.com. your leg, homeboy. You used to it. And am I allowed to block it now? Yeah, go, go, go. go. Alright, Terry, bring the heat, Terry, bring the heat, bud. Bring the heat, Terry, bring the heat. He's in front of you. Oh! After that, we go down and we go up again to the Puerto Guayanay, which is the third pass. Huh? And after that, we're gonna pass. How high is that one? Not it's so high. A, a, almost close to 15,000 feet. Wow, that's the high one. So you can that's see one, how yeah. much we descend. That's almost 3,000 3, feet yeah. walking down to Kori Wainachi. Yeah. It's, it's a long, long one. Here. Yeah. And from here, we're going to take the train, train down to kilometer 104. All right. Yeah. All right, cool. The Machu Picchu is... Machu Picchu in this, in this map is, is over here. Over there. You can see it in this map. Right? Machu Picchu is over here. And let me guess, I bet you Cusco is here. Uh, Cusco is... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's far away. Close, over here. Close. So, so, so far That's away. what I meant, there. I do have paint everywhere. I do have paint everywhere. Potatoes are all like not usually. Think of as a potato, like when I think of a potato, like feel my hands, I usually think of something like about that size. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, they're not. They're more like this size. Oh, okay. They're a little Bigger, smaller. Like new potatoes? They're, yeah, littler, Spuds. more like a carrot size almost. A spud? With, yeah, um, and lots of different colors. I'm imagining a big pile of rocks all piled on top of each other. And they're kind of like spreading out the meat so that it's covered, wow, you really so that there's a lot of surface area on the rocks. Uh huh. I'll smell a little lamb, a little potatoes. A little dung, maybe. Lamb. Lamb. <laughs> they're just piled in, uh, oh, okay. in a dome. Yeah, like a dome. Oh, okay. All right, and then, I got you. Nice one. Then putting all these potatoes on the inside and oh, kind yeah, of around right. it to cook it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now it looks like they're going to put the like a red plastic, almost like a tarp thing over it. And then probably more of the dirt and sod that they did before. As well. Cool. Well, all righty. It's rather elaborate, and there's kind of like yeah. charcoal on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's really pretty take cool. Their it's pretty involved. Seriously. Yeah. Well, remember, this is a special case. Right over here. Right over here, right over here. Elise? Yep, right here, right over here. Okay, right here. Okay, here we go. Yes. Pile the dirt on. Right here? Yeah, just drop it on. Fiery pit. Fiery pit. There you go. Just toss your dirt on. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, my God. They brought a big over the snow. In return for the hospitality of the farmers residing in the small mountain settlement of Chilipahua, the teenagers performed a community service project. The villagers took great pride in having the school be painted, and the fellowship was more than willing to lend them a hand. We can't always just sort of rely on somebody to come over to us and say, hey, here's a paintbrush, here's how you do it. You really have to step up and get yourself engaged. You know, walk over, introduce yourself to maybe one of the locals. Um, you know, try to strike up some kind of conversation or some kind of communication. Um, the point is that, you know, if, if we're just kind of hanging out, sometimes, as you know, 
some of the folks who are blind can kind of just get left out. You're just kind of hanging out, just waiting for, for somebody to engage you. But that's not the way life is. We have to step up and engage ourselves in, in this activity. Hey, Paul, uh, Paul, also, take your cane out. Well, just I don't want to get it stuff all over it. Yeah, I know, but well, yeah, I don't know how you get around. Well, this is water-based paint. It'll come out. You okay. got to use your cane to tap around. There's paint yeah. buckets yeah. everywhere. There's, you know what I mean? There's, there's doors. There's walls. There's, yeah. Use that cane. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's move over here. Painting is primarily a visual activity which makes it extremely difficult when you are blind. For some of the blind teenagers, the experience is just as new as it is to the local now, school children, many of whom have never seen it. Just kind of go down on the brush more, like, like that. There you go, That's, that moves the paint. There you go. What happened? That's just a bucket spill? So how are you doing that, Alicia? I still don't get it. You just move the brush back and forth. It's not very hard. The only issue is knowing where your blank spots are. Yeah. You can have someone tell you that. Because I was going to do on top, or, you know, it's hard for someone to do the reason. Yeah. Well, you can do that. Can you hear when it starts to get dry? Can hear how the noise changes. Yeah, it's hard with a lot of background noise, I hear you. Okay, that's good. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna head here, back and forth. Sweet. Down. Yep, down is good. Okay, time for more paint. The paint comes yep. up pretty quickly, so you have to reapply. Why did you get that corner? Uh, behind you. If I get a brush. Yeah. It's like I'm just going over this to make it like all like look decent. Yeah. Because there's like paint strokes everywhere. How how much are all of my clothes? Mm, not much on your shirt, maybe just a couple dabs here, but it's your hand looks like you shook hands with Papa Smurf. Just pretend it's finger painting. Go use your fingers on the corners. You kind of have to wonder how they came up with this. Came up with this? Yeah. yeah. Something burning. I think the trees, I think the wood they burn has that funny smell. Oh, oh yeah. The rocks. <laughs> and they're grabbing the meat. It does smell good. It that smells so delicious. Right. Yep, and reach out to your left. To your left. There you go. <laughs> grab one. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Now back up and Andrew can grab one out of the fire. We're grabbing them out of the flames. Yeah. Sweet. You're not, you're not going to get burned, are you? Hot potato, hot potato. So, take a few steps. Yeah. You get it? It's a good potato. It's good. That was my favorite. Yeah. The skin's going to be a little crispy. Well, I got it. This is que me quieres. This is que me amas. Pero nada, nada. Cariño para mí. Pero nada, nada. Cariño para mí. Ahora.
this was a little bit of water. The rock right between your toe and your heel, all right? Doing great, Carl. Good job, boss. There we go. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. You fall, you got Whoa, almost fell in. Yeehaw! Uh huh? Are those boots waterproof you got? Yeah. Good job. I think so. They're poor type, so yeah. On the road again. It's horse, right? Uh, cows. Oh, a cow? Are there cows around here? Yeah. What do we have to go up? The peaks in Peru are as high as so it doesn't start raining. Feet. During their trek, the fellowship will ascend to passes up to 15,000. Wow, you guys cruise through that section. Peruvian potato farmers and to whom like these mountains here. provide a welcome home right, so use that are used water. to breathing the thin air. For Paul, it is not so much his blindness, but the low oxygen level proves extremely tiring. Lighten it. Lighten it. I'll take a water bottle. So you put maybe oh, yeah, his eight pounds on the horse. Well, he no, because he needs it. It's just his water. Yeah. I can put it here. It's okay. Yeah, but I mean, we have horses. They don't have any thin on. Well, the main thing I have in the pack is my stack of my two water bottles. Yeah. So we're not telling you to take it off. Okay. We're just saying okay. we want to help. Hang on a second. But we don't want to over help. Yeah. He's grabbing your water bottle. You want me to do that? Uh, your second one, the one I'm about to give you. Okay, cool. Dude, look at all the stuff you got in here. What's this? Your little secret stash of food? What's this? This is heavy. Digital recorder, actually. It's in a glasses case. Let me take it. I'll, I'll, I can take stuff, too. I, my pack is pretty light today. <coughs> so, if I need to, I can. Why well, that just start hurting at the very end there? Yeah. I hate to have to, I hate to, have to keep stopping. I just don't want to take a layer off. Does this just go in my day pack? Maybe. What? Your shirt? Yeah. 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 Julio, you have that day pack? Where is that? You took it? Here, let me throw this. Day pack? Yeah. Thank you. Did someone take the, the water bottle off the day pack when they uh, put it on the horse? I have it in my backpack. Oh, oh that's right, you do. Uh, that was stupid. Okay, let's go!
over tops. You're doing great, Paul. A little yep. narrow, meaning flat like ground. And then we're gonna turn right, kind of gully like, just a tiny bit. Mm, not actually, no. Lap it slowly. Top of the ridge there, boss man. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh. Nice work. It won't it won't <laughs> yeah, there we go. Right, right, right Maybe. There we go. It's hard to give a blind person five. Yeah, it doesn't work. Just but it, it's all so good. Out. We worked it out. When you need a hand, we all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you understand. We all need somebody to lean on. All right, if I slide, I'm going to just slide super hard and take you all out. Is that cool? Just clip you all by your legs and take you all out, does it? His or yours? Oh, uh, okay. I don't want to overdose. No, you won't. <clears throat> Should I take another one then? A prescription dose of those is usually four. So So he gave me three, so that's nine hundred if he had three hundred. And I took if you took two hundred milligrams. So I took six hundred. So you could take another. I, I used to pop four of those things every morning when I was skiing. So four is okay. Yeah. Have you lived up, Terry? Huh? Between yeah. Jeff and I we have stronger pain meds too. Yeah. Really? <laughs> we can give you the good stuff, man, if you need it. Morphine? No, no. Oh. He, he might. I don't. I, I couldn't give you that. Morphine? I'll let you take my picture for a solo and then we'll be even. It's in here. Sorry, we have to go really slow. No problem. Rub some on the top of your ears. Kind of take your fingers and rub over your ears. Okay. All right, teammate. Here's your glasses. Oh, thank you. All right, come on, ibuprofen. Okay, so we're gonna stay done. We're already friends. Remember how we did this one? Just to your left. Okay, so turn around. No, no, hold on, hold on. Are you cool with this, buddy? No. Are you? It's all right. Hold on, hold on. This can change your body. Shaking. What's left foot up? High, 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 high. In the stirrup. Left foot. Push it forward. Toe in, toe in, toe in. All right. Standing up. Whipping your right leg over. Whip it, whip it, whip it, whip it. Right leg all the way over. Come on, like you mean it. Perfect. Oh boy. A little hip. Yeah. Right. Hold on, baby. Right. All right. Okay, right stirrup. Okay, Paul. I'm putting your right foot in the stirrup. Push forward. You're good, you're solid in there. Remember how you held on last time? I remember this part, where's the other thing? Right here? You got it. He's going! And yeah, we're going to this one. Let's go. Alright, this feels going to be a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. Alright, come on, buddy.
want you to walk the last 45 minutes into camp so that we're not pulling in way after them, right? I don't want to go much faster than this, though. Yeah, well, well, if you feel like it's going too fast at any time, you just tell us. We'll no, slow you down. No, no, no. But we are going faster than the other group, so. Right in front of us, right over here, uh -huh. there's like this huge rock face that's just like straight down pretty much. It's very smooth, it's not jagged at all. Above that, there's the jagged peak with lots of snow on it. And then the, um, the passageway is right there. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a good rock here. <laughs> peak that just looks right over the lost city. A lot of peak. But it's cool because it's kind of these really little steep stairs. The fellowship has wandered far from the settlement of Chilipahua, the school, and the potato farms. At 13,000 feet, they arrive at the highest camp. Peaceful as the campsite may seem, Eric and the other guides are mindful of altitude sickness. During the night, temperatures drop below freezing. But so far, Alicia, Terry, and Paul have persevered. They are still hours removed from Ancascocha, the highest pass. A steep 2,800-foot climb awaits. Andrew, the first group's about 200 meters above us. That's about 15 minutes. What's 200 meters above us? The first, the, the not first two, group. Not 200 meters of walking, oh, okay. but straight up. Straight up from here. Meters. There's seven switchbacks. That could be you. Run number two. I'm 
almost there, guys. Go guys. No, nah, we're staying. No, wait. no dude. We're hanging with you. If you want to um, take an arm or use a pack, a little extra support. We need to use the poles because that's what's going to help. I just need to go real slow. Yeah. Alright. Dude, fine. this is your climb. You do it how you want to. We're here with you. Well, you I don't want to hold you guys back. How the heck would you hold us back? If we wanted to go, we would go. I don't really care about <laughs> Trust me. Supporting. <laughs> We're a team, man. We finish this thing as one. Absolutely. It's more important for us to stay here with you. Hey, easy, Terry. No, we're easy. Outside, it right? matters now. Okay. Hey, you want to take some water? No, I'm fine. Let's go. And, dude, you're not being a burden at all. It's what you call friendship, man. Oh, that was another deep thing I just said. That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> all right, true, Tex. Huh? Wow, see, I knew I learned from you, Andrew. Yeah, Texas learned some wisdom from yeah. the Northeasterners. That's right, right Andrew. Yeah, you do appreciate it. Angle's starting to relent a little. Paul is growing tired. Terry is struggling to overcome both his blindness and physical pain as the fellowship makes its way towards the pass, from where they will enter the Kusichaka Valley. Okay, now, slow to the left now. Okay, we're going to step up onto the right, onto like kind of a smooth hump. Have you ever heard any, um... Down the valley, is, uh, you know, it drops down the valley. It's where we're going to go another couple hours. And, all this and then above the valley, up on the other side, above us, the way you're facing right now, uh -huh. huge rock faces, big mountains. Like you can see where the glaciers used to be. Okay. Now, can you figure out a way to position yourself? Nice. You want to get that other foot up and all out of the water so it doesn't go cold? Nice. I know that's going to be super uncomfortable, man, but we'll get you some, uh, some hand sanitizer when we get back to camp. That knee in there far enough? Yeah, that looks good, because that's, you know, that's where your, your ligament's under the water, so that's what I want to see. Now, you want it straight or you want it bent like No, that? it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whatever you can hold. Now, mountain, this mountain water, is that cold enough? Sure. It feels it's better than nothing. It made you go yeah. numb the other day, right? Yeah. You've been working your knees for a couple of days up to that soccer game. Yeah. And then at that soccer game, I saw you take the swing. I just hope so. this doesn't last long. I hope it's not. It's well, not um, 
everlasting, is it? No, 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 no. This will this will go away. It's not like you have to go home and get operated on. Because honestly, it really scares me. No, no, it shouldn't. No, no, don't let it scare you. You're not going on a horse, boy. Better not. No, you're a tough guy. Like but to so horse, you know, we have to have to do those couple things, right? Mm -hmm. Anti-inflammatories every four to six hours. Keep it under the water every time we get a chance for eight to ten minutes. Okay. You said you had right. this bottle in your pants. And then uh, use these poles. That you I am. Use. Let's go, dude. Now does that feel like you get a little bit more stability? Yeah. Now listen, I know it's hard, but I try and not walk with a stiff leg going down, okay? I know you want it. I know you're going to be kind of doing this, you know, walking with a stiff leg like a peg leg. Uh -huh. It's not doing yourself any, any, any service. What's best is to try and allow that joint to move a little bit while you're walking, okay? Okay. Alicia, yeah. congratulations, yeah. Kansas girls. I'm standing on the highest yeah. point of our trip, on top of a cairn, on top of a pass, which is about on top of a mountain, <laughs> on top of a mountain which is about 15,100 feet in elevation, and it's quite cool. That's about it. Your homeboy Andrew is standing right here <laughs> beside Sorry, I just you. Turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> so Come on. I'll turn it back, back on down. in a moment. Just I just take slow steps back down. Yeah, there you go, Alicia. You're pretty close to the bottom. One more step, Alicia, and you're done. All right. We're now on our highest point of our trip. Good job. Good job. Up here is a little rock, um, like um, pillar with a cross on top to mark the top of the pass. So. And this is the highest altitude I've ever been, 15,000 feet, and downhill from here into uh, Machu Picchu.
Inca trails can be found across the Andes, forming a 14,000 mile network from Quito, Ecuador in the north, all the way beyond Santiago in southern Chile. As the fellowship descends into the sacred valley, they pass the ruins of an ancient civilization. With overgrown mountain slopes ahead, the distant call of Machu Picchu draws near. The Urubamba River brings life to the valley, and with it, civilization. It is the beating heart of the cloud forest that surrounds Machu Picchu. Rediscovered in 1912 by American explorer Hiram Bingham, Machu Picchu has been deserted for over 300 years. Nearly a century after Bingham's discovery, the fellowship boards a train that will take them to the stone steps that lead up to Inti Punctu, the entrance to the lost city. Step over, step over. Take big step, big, 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 big. Go. You will waste time. Step over. Well done. Just felt the sun. We're in the sun gate now. In the sun gate. You definitely feel the sun. Go, go, go. Wow! We just came through the sun gate. We made it! Yeah! That was amazing. Right there is Machu Picchu. Right there. Yeah, it comes down a ridge and yeah. Machu Picchu's there. Yeah. And then it comes up. So we're going to go across that way and the valley is down there. You can see Machu Picchu from here. Good job. Any words, Paul? Yeah, I'm thirsty. <laughs> well done, everyone. Welcome to Peru. 
from holding on for my dear life all the while I reach up and I Craving an answer to the question of my time Digging and searching for that I need to find Inside my own mind Solutions sit and wait and lie Is that right? My hands are up from holding on for my dear life all the while. I reach out. 